Uh, I'm Saranya Sriram and uh, I'm part of Microsoft uh, Azure Cosmos DB's product team as a product manager and that's uh, my Twitter handle as well. Agenda today, we will talk about uh, Cosmos DB's overall security model and then um, we'll pick up two, three areas. One area is on encryption, one area on security via diagnostics and one on Author, uh, basically uh, authentication, authorization, roles and access control. Uh, that's pretty much I think what we might have time to talk for today, yeah. So um, today morning we spoke about Cosmos DB, not going to repeat that, but want to highlight that it is a ring zero service, globally distributed service, it's multi-model, it has um, uh, a common storage engine so to speak, but then able to expose in multiple APIs or multiple data structures. As you see, we have support to Cassandra, what we call the core SQL or NoSQL API. It's been rebranded to NoSQL API there. Supports third party APIs such as Mongo, Gremlin, and recently we announced uh, DSQL, distributed SQL, that is sharded uh, Postgres as well uh, as part of the cloud native database. Uh, claim to fame, uh, the platform offers uh, single millisecond read and potentially write latencies for point reads writes at P99 at extremely large scale where you can uh, separate or segregate storage while transactions throughput or operations that you want to do. Okay. So we saw this as well in the morning, uh, primarily to highlight about operational needs of today's uh, uh, databases, data stores needing both batch and streaming with real-time indexing. Uh, they say operational analytics support, uh, developer-friendly, NoSQL uh, APIs that we say here, zero downtime, elastic scaling, and all of these things. And we spoke in detail this morning. So hopefully we have an idea of what Cosmos DB is. Otherwise, there are sessions earlier this morning and yesterday specifically for developers. So that's something that we can go and take a look at. So to a question that we had right now, we were talking about your security uh, is core to every organization, every developer, and the security is built upon, for example, what Cosmos DB as a service or a database service can provide, and its hosting provider, which is the Azure, what is the service that Azure security can provide, and finally, the Azure is also set up in physical data centers. So what does Microsoft security framework can provide as well? So starting from top down, right? When we look at Microsoft data center, there is a very detailed data center security overview and I put the link there. This is not the core topic of today's discussion. So we won't go into data center security, but then uh, there is uh, a clear guidelines in terms of how should um, uh, racks of hardware be brought into data center, who should be uh, having access to it. Just as in um, software we talk of DMZ zones when you create architectures, uh, here you have physical demilitarized zones where certain vendors are allowed access in, certain vendors are not allowed. So how do you even move goods across data center, how is schooling? And what is kind of uh, the measure or ARPUs of measuring security benchmark? A lot of those things are mentioned here. So we can take a look at that. And compliance forms a very, very critical part of security because each of these, like ISO 9001, will come with its own benchmark of security components. And will also say that every three months you need to revalidate or every six months, depending on each of those compliance certification, that uh, the Microsoft data center has to apply and then get certified. And as data centers apply, even per service like the storage services, compute services, Cosmos DB service, each service has to apply for certain of these. Some of these will, ISO 9001 will have couple of things for Azure data center, will have couple of things for each of the platform services also. So want to highlight that Microsoft takes this very, very uh, uh, specifically. And then there are certain other compliance, like HIPAA is for healthcare, right? And then uh, there is uh, uh, SOC 1, SOC 2 is primarily for FinTech or finance. So there are some compliance which is very uh, industry aligned also. So that's something that we need to do. And then this was about Azure data center. 
let's go one level lower and talk of azure security generally when you're talking about how do we build systems and what are the things that we take care of very very crowded slide but again i'm going to go very fast here uh, because uh, one is about proactively as we build uh, products pl platform services what kind of sdlc processes we need to do uh, we have we follow something called uh, ctls that is continuous testing uh, libraries that provide right from integration testing end to end testing then stress testing component testing white box testing so there is a bunch of testing things that we need to do as part of regular rigor right so that's one and then uh, even access within microsoft developers who has access to certain production machines not machines there are a bunch of these things how can you make uh, uh, access to production environments how can you actually commit changes there are a bunch of those that are monitored all of these are actually at an azure security wide component which is available even when we do deployments entire azure regions are divided into batches of you know 1 2 3 4 each a couple of data centers are in one batch and the way we roll our security is for our 5% of our workload 7% 20% so we actually go through a phased approach on our production deployments any deployment on azure holistically will take uh, minimum i'm not even saying maximum minimum 8 to 12 weeks for it to go to the deployment so our deployments are still pretty long not very uh, less that's mainly because of the security constraints that we work around right then bunch of downtimes outages you would have seen in azure outage pages which are related to certificates expiring or particular passwords or secrets not available so that's also a part of the core uh, system from our side just as i said we also uh, regenerate all our secrets and our certificates and roll over at uh, regular cadence etc so with this we'll move to the topic of today's discussion which is what are we here to discuss about cosmos db specifically and how are we ensuring security say by design across there are various pieces we will be talking about few more than the others as i said but to kind of give you an extended layer cake kind of a view you'll see for example um uh network security basis of how what all we we've come a long way at some point we just had dnet in fact we didn't even have virtual network support many years when we launched it so we are making strides and ways towards this uh, and then cross origin a uh, cross resource origin cross origin resource sharing core support is definitely important we support that uh, author authorization authentication components uh, global replication security checks you would have heard of these people uh, who are using cosmos yeah. how many of you have used cosmos db here a few of you okay great uh, would have actually come across this global replication with lsn which is basically what is the state of consistency and which is the last committed transactions and how do we identify that right so kind of global replication trying to uh, follow the right kind of standards based on the consistency they choose backups and then monitoring for attacks both using our telemetry client side telemetry diagnostics and troubleshooting that's another piece and then of course uh, encryption both at rest and then client side encryption with always uh, encrypted from you know the data which is even being sent over the wire to azure data center and cosmos db how can we ensure that it is encrypted so even microsoft has no idea or we don't even know what your data can be like so that was that uh, let's keep going and then uh, so first we are going to talk about i said couple of uh, if you look if you remember the agenda we'll just talk about three pieces of the security components we'll talk about network we'll talk about um, um, encryption we'll talk a little bit about um, authorization uh, components etc right network we've come a long way we started many of these are slightly repetitive with other azure services and we specifically brought it in because one to say cosmos db is on par with other azure services but also that these are very important right when we are looking uh, for uh, things like uh, customizable firewalls bringing things in vnet service endpoints service link private link uh, so people have worked on azure network components you will see that how you can allow other azure resources to talk to you 
how do you ensure you allow on-premise resources to talk to you through few other routes. You can do express route, you can do peer-to-peer uh, -peer or uh, point to site. So there are few other ways where you can talk to. So and then uh, a service link is one other way to enable uh, private, uh, private endpoints as well. So there are a bunch of these things that's there. So uh, here, this is how the Azure uh, network security IP firewalls VNet page would look like. Just uh, to kind of uh, uh, highlight that, let's keep going. Here, uh, you can allow a specific IP. We can allow a range of IPs. Uh, we can deny logs while available. So it supports subnetting uh, Cosmos DB available on VNet, right? So these are like standard virtual network pieces. So what is service endpoint? Allow Cosmos DB account in a VNet and restricts account only from that VNet and to be used by, uh, so if you, you can allow service endpoint to say that I want to have certain public IPs to have access to my account only. So that is possible. Uh, private endpoints restricts account only to either a vertical VNet or assigns private IP to a VNet. So these are things that we can do on Cosmos DB's virtual network as well. Right? So in terms of picture, from on-premise, you can have an Azure private link that enables an on-premise IP to be part of a virtual network on the customer's VNet. And then this private endpoint is now because it's part of this virtual network can actually talk to all the components at that VNet. So if Cosmos DB is part of this virtual network and it supports this sub and it has the capability to support private endpoints, then you can connect to on-premise components via private link. So that's how the uh, figurative picture will look like, right? Uh, course. We can uh, set that up on our settings. This is the Cosmos DB page. There is uh, 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 specific ways where you can allow your origins and then we will uh, allow support to that, etc. Let's go over to certain other pieces. Uh, interest of time, I think there are more things that we can see. Uh, on the authorization and authentication pieces, right? Cosmos DB supports two, two sites. One is uh, role-based access control using Azure Active Directory. Uh, and also originally the way we launched it, even before we had RBAC support, was using master keys and resource tokens to access the data. So those are the main things. Also, we need to know when we talk of Cosmos DB access or any Azure, you might have heard that there are primarily uh, uh, from the customer point of view, you can look at it, but also in the implementation point of view, there are two kinds of operations that we can allow. One we call as um, control plane or the operations that are needed to uh, set up your systems, like create a database, create a collection, set a particular RU, give access to someone. A lot of these are management tasks or what we call as control plane operations. There are other pieces where we call as our data plane operations where you're actually talking of user's data, you're inserting a particular data, you're deleting a data, et cetera. So within, uh, and this is Azure wide, not just Cosmos DB. Within Cosmos DB, you will see that there are uh, different, uh, 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 the way we talk to it, there are different channels to talk to the control plane and to data plane to bifurcate these. And then as uh, an internal terminology, I'm not sure many of you are aware, called resource providers. Uh, there's specific control plane resource providers and data plane providers as well, right? So with that, with that, uh, with that introduction, I wanted to kind of highlight. So when you talk of authorization, see, I, once you're authenticated, now you have to be authorized to the level of access that you want to be. Hey, I want to give you read access, write access, contributor only for a specific amount of time or a different kind only for a certain uh, collection or certain kinds of constraints within the collection, so on and so forth. So within that, if you kind of see there are, as we say, control plane versus data plane, role-based access control, right? So uh, within Azure Active Directory, you can do account management, resource management, 
and various data operations. All the things you see in this side green are all data plane operations. These are primarily control plane which is management and controlling of the uh, resources, right? So when we took ta talk about control plane and data plane, typically when in Cosmos DB, uh, you use Azure AD RBAC, uh, role based access control. Just as you would have seen in other sessions, you can go to Azure, it's a very standardized tool set, you'll see IAM, Identity and Access Management, uh, wherein you can go set up rules and then you have access to your Cosmos DB accounts accordingly. For data plane, in addition to RBAC, we also today allow, uh, for example, uh, master key and uh, resource tokens that is available. Uh, so, so essentially when you look at identity based authorization, you are, you uh, you'll have to first get authenticated and this authentication is using uh, STS like a security token service that could be any external service it could be Microsoft account Google account any account so you, once you get uh, authenticated to that account then you come to authorization for this authorization you will go to uh, identity provider like Azure AD to identify your level of authorization and then you kind of have those access rights in control plane and your data plane operations. So those are the pictures that I said. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You have it here in your portal. You go and search. You provide the whatever level of access that you want to provide. And in Azure, since we use Azure Active Directory, it's fully linked to Azure AD. When we talk of master key, then it's uh, uh, typically there is uh, there are two kinds of uh, keys as we said. Uh, there is a primary key and a secondary key. So uh, typically there are again read write keys or read only keys. So you will provide those keys uh, in your applications to access and then you would have access to those. Right? Uh, also very important we already spoke that we need to rotate or regenerate the keys at uh, regular intervals of time. Uh, that's that. Now talking of resource tokens, these are also important uh, pieces, although as much as uh, we want to look at how we can optimize and uh, you know uh, see how we can do, but resource tokens can be used for limited time access to documents, collections, etc. Uh, also resource tokens will be passed when you're developing and you're doing pagination to pass tokens to one another, so on and so forth, right. So um, those are that. Now let's come over to encryption, that's the third piece and then we will do a little bit of Q&A if we do have, but I just wanted to touch upon ensure that we do uh, cover the encryption components as well. Right? In Cosmos DB when we say encryption today, uh, we've come a long way actually. Today we support uh, in general availability service managed keys, customer managed keys and client side encryption as well. So essentially what this means is service managed keys are, uh, the keys are generated by Cosmos DB, although we don't have, have access to those keys, they are self generated and they are placed in the Azure key vault. And then this is used to encrypt all the data, it's, it happens by default actually, encrypts all the data that is on Cosmos database anyways. Uh, so uh, if, uh, and this is data at rest essentially, right. Customer managed keys is the scenario where the customer has their own keys and they drop those keys in the Azure key vault and they say use my keys to encrypt your, our data because we don't want Cosmos DB or any other Azure service to encrypt it from our end, right. So that is customer managed keys and client side encryption which is now in GA is to cater to data on transit to kind of say that uh, what if there's a man in the middle attack when the data is on the wire, how can I ensure that uh, whatever data I'm sending is an encrypted data. But if I'm sending an encrypted data and I'm doing CRUD operations and I'm doing replay subsets, how will the system understand what data is there? So can I enable end to end encryption using client side? And for example, I build reports or Power BI dashboards or even general readouts, how can the, the right kind of RBAC access control to the person who's reading should have the data decrypted end to end. So that's what is the client side encryption uh, piece that achieves, right. So uh, 
so if I look at this layer cake of encryption, it is your data, encryption at rest using service managed keys. Now we can, re, we can instead of using the keys generated by us, but using the service managed keys construct, we can use customer managed keys to encrypt the data at rest through the what the service managed keys does, but actually replacing that uh, key with the customer's key. So that is what we just spoke about right now. Uh, so it's, we are showing it as a layer cake because when you use customer managed keys under the hoods it will take that key, but it will follow the steps that we use to encrypt via service managed keys. So in a way it is uh, uh, it's over and above that. So uh, in uh, all data in Cosmos DB is anyway stored encrypted. So there will be a service managed key encryption that will happen at rest. Over and above that the customer managed key will take and use the service managed key steps to re-encrypt that. Let us uh, try to see uh, a short uh, demo that we have recorded here. So what you will see in this demo is couple of things that you probably will not uh, use day to day. Uh, you will see just use um, in Cosmos DB to check diagnostics, to check how the progress of your for example backup restore or if you are accessing how many requests are hitting, what are the client side diagnostics, or which IP addresses are coming to a request, all of that you can see using diagnostic logs. So in Cosmos DB typically what you uh, customers typically do is they will go and enable diagnostic logs separately. Now we, this triggers a RPI. So uh, that is what uh, they do, they do diagnostic logs. Now uh, the same dogs we can see it on our side as well and uh, you would have heard this Custo uh, kind of a way where you can uh, query and uh, look at the back end data. So here what we will be showing is when we do customer managed keys whether those keys are encrypted or not we will just be directly querying and checking. Uh, because that is the only way we can uh, definitively say that whether those data items have been um, encrypted or not encrypted. So let us take a look at this and then we can talk a little bit about that. So we have a database account ready with us and we are going to trigger user workload along with CMK to model prod behavior. So here we are catering 5 collections and we are constantly pumping data into it. And while this takes place we are also going to give our Azure Cosmos DB update call to enable CMK. We have passed in the keyword QRI for our enablement. Now we, this triggers a RP action which queues the workflow. Now when this workflow is dequeued for execution, we can, uh, a couple of steps, steps take place. Some CMK related configs are being set and a put call is sent to all the collections. Now this workflow waits for encryption to complete from all the replicas. Since this will take some time to complete, we can go over some previous logs uh, from a similar run we have ready with us. So here we can see that uh, a background task get triggered which re-encrypts data on each of the replica independently while the new user writes are encrypted and encryption time. So for a particular partition all the replicas since this is an old run all the replicas are reporting 100% progress and the current LSN that is being encrypted. Similarly, all the collections, five collections are reporting 100% progress. Now when we go over through the management workflow logs, we can see that initially all the replicas are reporting encryption set as false and at the end they start reporting encryption set as true. Now since all the replicas for a particular partition is, are reporting it uh, encryption completed, uh, encryption is completed for all the partitions similarly and workflow can be set as completed. In this way, uh, our update call will uh, be set as completed and the status would be set as succeed. So this was a really quick uh, demo to show that you can enable customer managed keys on existing collections or existing uh, systems as well. Uh, why is this interesting because you have there are already existing collections which are four node replica with multiple uh, regions etc and we want this to be replicated across regions. So when we enable service managed keys as you see today it is available using CLI which is command line interface tool. So you will go, go to Azure Key Vault is a way where you can store your managed keys. So you would set up, point your key link there and then you will say uh, enable. 
Now once you enable, depending on how many physical partitions are there behind your collection, if in this case there were five physical partitions, so it has to go and update all five physical partitions. And in this case there was only one region, so there is only one uh, uh, region, otherwise it will be uh, five partitions times number of regions. If there were two regions, like you have set between Austra India and Australia, there are two regions, five, partition, five physical partitions means 10 nodes. And each of that now has a four node replica, so it is about 40. So those are what things happen at the back end and then they get uh, updated and then the status then says. Also in terms of the telemetry you would have seen the query she ran was on the Custo query. Uh, you can take, uh, take a look at the exact same st statistics etc. using Azure Diagnostics uh, logs, right. So we can go enable diagnostic logs and that is where you will be taking. So that's what we saw, uh, encryption at rest with service managed keys, with customer managed keys, uh, the same commands that uh, we saw in the demo where you kind of decide which is your location, what is your Cosmos DB account and uh, uh, you, you have to select your, you have to select your consistency policy before the output comes back. Uh, and this is all in time, huh? there is no downtime in your application, this is for existing collection. So your collection is active. Uh, probably stress tested with high workloads which is coming in and out and this happens seamlessly at the back end when you are initiating that and once you have customer managed keys going forward you will always have your keys set up. So uh, the last segment of today is uh, the security via our diagnostics. That means uh, what is it that uh, customers, developers how they can take a look at uh, you know any sort of sec uh, security diagnostic components. There is actually quite a bit there. Again we will be touching just couple of areas. But if you look at Cosmos DB's monitoring landscape, there is one server side monitoring available either using Azure portal or using Azure monitor which is the metrics which is free, Azure monitor using diagnostics logs which is free. So this comes for about four weeks or 30 days of free data that is available and beyond that you can actually contain as much as you want. You have to enable diagnostic logs as I said, you have to uh, go to diagnostic settings and then enable diagnostic logs and it will be pushed into your log analytics and you can see it via the Azure log analytics there, right. So that is a couple of ways and then you can also take a look at it programmatically with the SDKs as well. On client side, you can capture server response, you can capture client side diagnostic logs which is very, very rich from our side. Uh, in fact, uh, very detailed troubleshooting we tend to do using client side log, uh, diagnostic logs, so that part is pretty clear and then also using API management as well. Okay? So uh, when we look at Azure portal, there are bunch of things that comes out of outside the box, the throughput, availability, latency, storage, consistencies, uh, system setup, etc. Azure monitor again gives you all of this but also gives you bunch of uh, data plane operations like uh, you know total number of requests, uh, server side latencies on those requests, etc. Logs also as I said gives you uh, activity logs and diagnostic logs etc. On the client side, it is extremely detailed available. Now when you want to monitor for attacks, like specifically you are looking for monitoring for attack, you want to look at Azure audit logging, uh, you want to look at uh, full text query. This is one thing when you look uh, for Cosmos DB, since a lot of this is with the users, if you do want uh, to log what is the shape of your queries that you are running, so that you kind of know which query is maybe or too high or there is any malicious queries or any extremely expensive queries that need to be optimized. If you want the exact shape of the query of which is the, uh, what are the parameters and what does your query look like, we will need to enable uh, full text query logging uh, which uh, you can do as a self-serve directly on the portal but that will also help. There are a bunch of query, uh, uh, for example, uh, error codes and each of them come with their own uh, stories for server side and client side. It is not a bad idea to kind of look at what kind of error codes you are getting, uh, that is going to be trivial. Uh, but the most important thing in, uh, in anything I would say, not just for Cosmos DB, 
deploying an end to end solution is only half of your work done, right. The remaining half of your work is being able to first ensure security being set up and then monitoring and troubleshooting for optimization and potential security hack. So that uh, is uh, something that we want to call out. And then things uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight 401 unauthorized, 403 access denied, 404 itself can have a bunch of sub statuses. Some things to keep in mind when you are looking at Cosmos DB's metrics, uh, diagnostic logs and also activity log. If you can identify actually from which IP address a particular request came from or which query uh, came from and which role it came from, what are the VNets, what case, so you, we do have certain uh, parameters that we can take a look at. Uh, so this was what we spoke about before. If you want to retain all of this for a longer period of time before purging, we can take that data and uh, directly move it to Azure Log Analytics for which you can query uh, using the kind of query you saw on the demo, etc. Uh, this was an example. For example, uh, um, although it's not very clear uh, in this screen, maybe in the small screens it will be, but it kind of uh, uh, gives you details as to, you know, uh, which IP address, what timestamps, who's the username. So it kind of gives you those details while uh, uh, accessing. This is the activity log we are talking about. Uh, we are also trying to work uh, as we speak on potential threat detections as well. There are certain things that we have in place, but uh, like the ability to have advanced algorithm. Uh, to, we do have alerting today in particular cases. You can set alerts, alerts on cost, alerts on requests, alerts on uh, piece. So this part of it is uh, available to some extent, but then enabling uh, stronger threat detection is something that uh, will come through as we speak about. Uh, so with this, uh, we are almost uh, closed in today's session. I'll just end by saying uh, uh, security communication. I just wanted to close the session more as what can you take back as, uh, you know, as developers from this session. We spoke a lot from Cosmos DB side of things, but then the, are there any best practices that each of us can take back in your respective uh, uh, companies? like ability for you to timely say whether there was a breach, error, target or find who are the affected customers and actionable outcomes that you want to work through that. So uh, there are certain uh, things that we follow and as I said, uh, uh, you know the blast radius and ability for us to phase our deployments proactively and having rings of deployment and identifying across say from support teams to impacted folks and publishing, targeting how you have uh, issues, having a service dashboard. These are things that I think all companies today are starting to build on their own as well. Like, you know, not depending 100% on the vendor, but also having to have these self-serve uh, tools as we speak about. So we have that for Azure, but we also are hoping that uh, it's going to be there for others as well. Some resources. And uh, there are, most of these are very detailed uh, documentation about certain aspects that we spoke about. So these texts uh, will be available. Thank you. Everybody.